Hello, it's David Clark here from DVC Training, and I just want to do a quick tutorial about making a basic DVD with Adobe Encore. I'm using Premiere Pro 6 here. Obviously, this is coming out in 2017. CS6 has been out for ages, but I know a lot of my customers are still using CS6. Once I'm in Premiere here, all I've done is go through the timeline and then just click on this little button here to stick in some chapters. You don't have to put in chapters, but it's quite nice to do so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to File and then Dynamic Link and Send to Encore. Now, if you're not using CS6, if you're using the CC version, you can't send stuff to Encore. What you have to do instead is export a movie. So you'll export a movie, then open Encore and then do exactly the same thing as I'm about to do here. First thing it asks you is where do you want to create the project? So obviously I'm just going to browse to location from my project files and set up a project there and I'm going to give it a name. Now I can choose whether to do a Blu-ray disc or a DVD. It is possible to select Blu-ray and then change it to DVD later on. The important thing to get right is this thing, television standard. I'm in the UK so I use PAL. Now if I'd left it at NTSC I'd be stuck later on because I wouldn't be able to change it. As for the rest of this I just leave it as it is and click OK. Now because I use that send to Encore it brings in the timeline and it puts it up here into the project window and it's all ready to use. I'll show you what I do in CC in a moment, but let's ignore that for now. Let's go straight from this to sticking in a menu, linking some stuff up and then making the disc. Like I said, this is a quick tutorial, not meant to be in depth. So, so far, as you can see up here in the project window, I've got the thing that I've brought in from Premiere, which is the video, and it's put it onto a timeline for me. Next, what I want to do is bring in a menu. So I'm gonna pop over to this window down here, the library, and I'm just gonna use a menu that already exists. Now, if you go to the set here, you can choose between different types of menus. I'm just gonna choose travel, and you'll notice it goes through a little bit of jiggery pokery here, which it only ever does the very first time you look at a particular set of menus. And then you can see now here, I've got a lot of different stuff I could nick and use. These little buttons here, trim it down so if I just click on that one it just shows me the menus that one just shows me buttons that one just shows me images and so on and if you hang over these things long enough it tells you what it's showing I want to choose a menu so I'm going to click on that find a menu I'm going to use one of these two rainbow menus here you notice there's two menus there's one that's called menu and one that's called sub menu you don't have to use the sub menu as a sub menu uh, literally they think that's a good thing for chapters that's a good, good thing for a main menu but if I fancied having that as my main menu, well, I can just take it and use it. And I'm just gonna drag it, drop it into the project window, and you can see it adds it in. This case, it's got some video behind it, so it's just brought that in. And now I've got a menu up here and a timeline down there. So I've got two things in the project, the menu and the timeline. What's the first thing that's going to play when I stick the disc into a player? Because obviously you stick it into a player, something happens. Well, the first thing to play is whatever has that little white circle with a triangle on it. That is set as the first play item. That's automatically set as the first play item because it was the first thing I brought into the project. Well, in this case, I'd rather like the menu to be the first play item. So I'm going to go select the menu, right click on it and say set as first play. So there we are. I've now got that in there. It's going to pop up with the menu and then what happens? Well, of course, if you stick it into a DVD player, it's going to pop up with this menu but you won't be able to do anything unless you link any of the buttons on this menu to something. You know, if I don't link any of the buttons, well, I'll be able to see the menu, but I won't be able to see anything else. Encore warns you of stuff like that. If I was to not do anything here, and I was to go to the Build tab, and the Build tab obviously is where I decide to build the disc, I'm gonna to choose to make it as a Blu-ray disc. I can choose to make a folder, which is just a bunch of files on the hard drive, or a disc, or an image. If you go to disk, then you write it directly to the disk straight away. If you go to a folder, then you make up a folder which you write later on. I'm gonna do that because I'm not gonna write the disk straight away. If you choose folder, you've just gotta decide where it's gonna go. Wherever it is, I make sure I don't put it onto the programs drive. And now what I'm gonna do is tell it to build the project. Now I haven't linked any of these buttons up, so it's gonna complain. Let's see what it says. Oh, there are problems. Do you want to have a look at them? Okay, let's have a look at them. This lot showing me a little icon there, which means button which means all these buttons on menus, they're not set. Yep, that's true, I didn't do anything. Okay, fair enough. This here is looking at the timeline saying, okay, there's two errors with the timeline. One, it's an orphan timeline. 
2, it's got no end action. What does that mean? What's an orphan timeline, you might say? Orphan timeline means it's a timeline not linked to anything. So, you know, I'm going to stick this disc into a DVD player. It'll pop up with this menu and then do nothing. I haven't linked up any of the buttons or anything else. There's no way for me to get to this timeline. And that's what it means. That timeline is not actually linked to anything and therefore it's going to mess up when you try and play it. So obviously you've got to link it to something. Well, the simplest thing to do is you're going to go off to the menu, click on the button that you want to link it to and then link that to the start of the timeline. There's loads of ways of doing it. I tend to click on the button and then come over to the properties window here. This properties window varies depending on what you've got selected. So if I select the timeline, it's the properties of the timeline. If I select the menu, it's the properties of the menu. If I select the button, it's the properties of the button. What are the properties of a button? Well, there's things like number and what kind of button is, but the main thing is link. What is it linked to? Well, I'm gonna link that to chapter one. Loads of ways of doing it. I tend to grab hold of this little thing called the Pickwick, push down with my left mouse button and just drag and point it at whatever I want to link it to. Bosh, it's now linked that up. That button is now linked to that. If I go back to this checky project thing here and click start, well, I will have solved at least one problem because the first chapter's linked up. Let's see if I've solved anything else. Well, let's go start. It does the analysis again and it solved two things. And now the button that was called chapter one is not listed because it is linked. All the others aren't, but the first one is. And you notice the timeline here is not on orphan timeline anymore because if I was to stick this into a DVD player, I could press that button and it would play this timeline. Still got a problem with the end action, but we can sort that out in a second. Let's go back to all these chapter buttons and sort those out. Well, you might be looking at this and saying, okay, I've got chapter two, three, four. Well, that's obviously that one, that one, and that one. Main menu, that's probably this thing. But there's a next and a previous. What are they? They're these things here. Now, looking at that menu, you might not have thought that they were buttons. You might have just thought they were orange triangles on it. They are buttons, and that's why they're in the list here of things not linked up. They're there because this is intended to be a sub menu, a chapter menu, if you like. And you normally, you know, you'd have a chapter menu and maybe 20 chapters in a piece of video. Well, if I've only got four buttons on each chapter menu, I'd need five menus to cope with that. So I'd need buttons to pop between them as well. So that's why they're there. I'm not going to use them. I don't need them in this case, so I'm going to have to get rid of them. What I'm first going to do is just link up these chapter things here. So I'm going to click on chapter two and pick that one. Click on chapter three and I could pick whip that one as well. Click on chapter four. Again, I could use the pick whip. I could click on the little triangle at the end. Go to sequence one, which is what the name of my timeline is and choose chapter four. Or another way you could do is grab hold of that. So go down to the chapter four on the timeline, grab it, drag it and drop it onto that chapter. So see loads and loads of different ways of linking stuff up. But there we are. I've now got four chapters linked up. I've actually got five chapters down here, so the fifth chapter isn't linked up to anything, but it doesn't have to be. You don't have to have your chapters linked to menus. Let's go back to this check project, click start again, and well, I've still got three problems there. I've got main, next, and previous, which is obviously that, that, and that. What do I link those up to? Well, I've got nothing to link those up to, so I'm actually just going to drag out a box over them by left-clicking with the mouse and dragging, selecting the lot, and delete. That's cured that now. So now you see I've got four buttons and my list of problems here has disappeared. It's gone down to the last thing, end action. What's that? Well, first of all, if I just click on it here, you may have noticed the properties windows changed. I and mean, I was just looking at the list and then fixing stuff. But if you click on whatever the problem is, it will take you here to something to help fix that problem. And you know, click on that one there, it opens up the properties of the timeline, because this is a problem with the timeline. Well, what's the end action? Well, the end action is what happens when it gets to the end of the timeline. And at the moment, it says it's not set. So what's going to happen is, you now I'll put the disc in, it'll play the menu, then I'll select one of these chapters, and then it'll play from that chapter all the way to the end of the video, and then nothing happens. Doesn't take you back to the menu, doesn't restart the video, whatever. Probably your most obvious thing to do there is take you back to the menu and light up chapter one but I've got to tell it to do that. So I'm going to do exactly the same kind of thing as I did when I was setting these buttons. I'm going to come up to the properties of the timeline, choose the Pickwick and point it at chapter one on the menu. So you see now what's going to happen is that when I play this timeline, it's going to get to the end and it's going to go pop back to this menu and light up that chapter. Click on the start button. Yay, problem solved. 
I would never want to write a disk when there is a list of problems. Because if there's a list of problems, it means it might not play properly. So sort those out before writing a disk. Okay, now that I'm happy, I could go ahead and write it. I could go ahead and customize these things, like the words family vacation up here. I could change that if I want to. But a rather good idea would be to do a quick preview before I write anything. And to do that, you just click on this little icon up here that says preview. So click on that and up it pops. And this is basically how it's going to appear when you stick the disc into a player. So you can see it's come up, it's highlight chapter one. I could move through these things with my mouse, but that's cheating because when you're actually on a DVD player, you won't have a mouse. So I wouldn't move through them with the mouse. I go down here and to use these buttons, which mimic the remote control on a DVD player, just to make sure that if you press the right button there, it jumps to the next chapter. Press the left button, it jumps to the left chapter. Press the up button, it jumps upwards or whatever. Now, sometimes these things don't do exactly what you want. They're actually set up automatically by Encore. And if they don't do what you want, then you've got to change the button routing. Like I said, this is a quick tutorial on making a DVD, so I'm not gonna go into that here. I do have a full blown tutorial on using Adobe Encore, which you can get off the DVC training website. And it explains things like button routing and customizing buttons and all sorts of stuff like that. But anyway, let's go and choose a particular chapter, click on the middle button, it plays it, then you can sit here and you could play it all the way through to the end and make sure at the end it goes back to the menu. But that's the best thing to do first. Use this, check it, make sure it works, and then write the disc. I'm gonna click on the title button. This is the same as the title button on your DVD remote. And it takes me back to the menu. If you had two or three menus, that, for example, checks which is your main menu, which is set as the title menu. Lots of things you can do here, so I do explain them more in depth in the tutorial. The only thing this won't preview is if you've got a menu here with animated buttons and animated backgrounds, and I know this one happens to have an animated background, this won't show you the animated menu. You can get it to render it, but it won't show you it just by clicking the preview button. You'd have to render it first. Anyway, happy with that, gonna click on exit, Click build and build it. And then it goes through and it remakes everything. It combines all the menus. This will take a little bit of time. How long it takes really depends on how fast your computer is, but it'll take a little bit of time. And then at the end of it, in my case, I'm gonna have a folder, which then I could write to a DVD separately, or I could have just gone up to output and chosen DVD disc and written it straight to the disc. I tend to like a folder first, then I can check it and then fiddle with it afterwards. But if you want to, you can go straight to a disc from Encore. But that is a very simple way of making a DVD with Adobe Encore. Now I was using Adobe CS6 there, but basically if you're using CC, you'd pretty much do the same thing. So let's go into CC and I'm just gonna bring in the same clips, let's make a timeline out of them. Now again, I could put chapters on inside of Premiere. It's not immediately obvious how you do that, because you don't have that little CD sort of icon that was in CS6. But what you can do is add in markers. The only slight issue you could have is that in the CC version of Premiere, you can put markers on the clips or on the timeline. And at the moment, my playhead here is actually selecting clips and highlighting them as I go through the timeline. So whenever I press the marker button, it puts it on the clip and not the timeline. So I'm clicking off it and doing that and it's putting in a marker. But I can sort that out by going to the sequence heading and turning off selection follows playhead, which means it doesn't automatically select the clip that's underneath the playhead. Actually quite like that for other occasions, but for this it's a pain in the neck. And I've put these in, which are effectively chapter markers. They're not chapter markers yet though. What you've got to do is change them into chapter markers. So come to it, double click on the marker and tick on chapter marker and it changes it. Go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And there they've all been changed now to Encore chapter markers. So they've all gone red. Now what I do is export that and get it into Encore. So I'm gonna go File, and then Export Media. I'm making a Blu-ray disc, so I'm gonna come up to Format and choose H.264 Blu-ray. It's selected HD25i, which is what my timeline is set to. And then all I've got to really do is come down here and make sure I set the right bit rate for the video. Now I didn't do any of that when I was 
doing the thing with CS6 because I just let Encore set it for me. If you're encoding this stuff out of Premiere, you've got to set the right bitrate. Now my particular set of clips here is not very long and at 25 megabits, which is the default, you'll notice it's coming out to be about two and a half gigabytes, which is fine. DVDs go for 25 gigabytes. It's not really a problem when you're doing 13 minutes like me. It might be a problem if you're doing two hours. You've got to adjust this target bit rate here to make sure that that comes in under about 23,000 megabytes. But once you've set that up, go to the audio, make sure it's on Dolby Digital because there's no reason why it shouldn't be on Dolby Digital. And then you just click on export and you make it. So you go ahead, off it goes and encodes it. It'll take a little bit of time. So like with CS6, it got kind of instantly into Encore and I could set up the menus and so on. With CC, you're going to have to encode it first and that takes a bit of time and then bring it into Encore. If you're using CS6, that encoding still has to be done. So it's just done when you're making the final project as opposed to right now when you're coming out of Premiere. But once this is done, all you then do is start up an Encore project. And just like I did before, I'm going to choose Blu-ray and PAL and give it a name and click OK. Then I'm going to right click in the project window and choose import as timeline because I know I'm trying to bring in a bit of video and put it onto a timeline. You know, Encore's a bit like Premiere. If there's going to be a piece of video inside the project which is going to appear on the DVD, it has to be on a timeline. So right click in the project window, go import as timeline find the video that you just exported. Now I exported the video as one file and the audio as another file. That's the way that particular way exports things. So make sure you select both of them, both the video, which is the M4V and the sound, which is the AC3. Then click on open. It brings it in, puts it into the project and creates a timeline for it with the audio and the video both on there, which then means we're in exactly the same situation as we were before when we did the dynamic link the rest of setting up the disc is exactly the same that's the only real difference you've got between cs6 and cc is you don't have a dynamic link so you have to make the thing first in cs6 you can use that fancy dynamic link sent to encore and then all the encoding and bit rates are set up automatically by encore and then it makes it at the end of the process whereas with cc you have to make the video first and then you bring it in and then you stick your menus on it I said so there's a lot more stuff you can do in Encore, which I'm not going to go through here. I do have a tutorial about using Adobe Encore. I'm just in the process at the moment of changing it so it works better on modern machines than the older version. My old version was made up in Flash with Encore, and now I'm making it up in a new way, which can be played better on current machines. But if you're interested in that, go to the website www.dbctraining.co.uk and have a look at the details there, and you can order it and download it directly from the website. Still, I hope that's been useful. Very simple introduction to Encore. You can see more tutorials on the DVC Training YouTube site. You can follow me on Facebook where I will post different bits of information about news on video editing. And you can also visit the website www.dvctraining.co.uk where you can read more information and see more tutorials as well as ordering some of my in-depth tutorials on Premiere and Edius. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more updates and tutorials.